G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we are finally having a look at some patch content, and the first one off the rank today is the A-10 Late. This plane, extremely highly anticipated, one of the best cash cows for Gaijin to this date, um, especially in the form of the A-10A early, which literally only differs by having two fewer missiles and a slightly lower battle rating. Now, naturally, I'm gonna call back to the last video that I made, which was pre-patch, speculating that this thing would be extremely powerful. Having four AIM-9Ls uh, and having a fairly large array of flares does give this plane a distinct advantage. However, does its performance, as in its flight performance, actually warrant the battle rating of 10.0? I honestly think it doesn't. I think 10.0 is a little bit too low for this type of plane, and despite it being a ground attacker, where ground attack should be its main focus, I am still able to, in this plane, perform fairly well, whereas there are some other planes at this battle rating that are given that similar ground attack role that um, aren't quite up to the standard. I would consider them, perhaps, free kills. So, the A-10, what's it got going for it? Well, it's actually not too bad at turning. Despite it being a bit of a hog, or a bit of a bus, if I might uh, use that phrase, this particular plane has straight wings, and that gives it a distinct advantage over its swept wing brethren, where it has the ability to turn at low speeds. It generates a lot of lift from those wings, and of course, you are able to exploit that in the low, uh, low speed turning. Now, you don't want to be caught out at too low a speed, because at that point, you're not going to actually make enough distance to steer away from your opponent's guns. But if you are at, say, 450, 500, 600, um, and even closer to your top end of 700, you can do fairly well. This plane is actually surprisingly capable. Now, what also makes it surprisingly capable is its four AIM-9Ls. These are really, really strong missiles. Of course, when everyone's got flares, it is a little bit of a different story, but overall, the AIM-9Ls are highly potent missiles. They have a lot of range, they have range that is comparable to that of the 9G, but they also have performance, as in turn rate, track rate, uh, comparable to that of the R60M. And so what you get is instead of having to deal with the short-ranged shortcomings of the R60, you actually get a lot more freedom there. Uh, there's a lot more room for maneuvering uh, opponents, there's a lot more room for fast opponents, uh, and you can actually get a lot of opponents before they're able to put two or three kilometers distance between you, which is extremely scary for anyone on the receiving end. Of course, to top this off, we get the Gao 8, which is a 30 millimeter cannon, rotary, plenty of volume of fire, plenty of area of effect, which means that the cannon, whilst it's not particularly accurate, can spread over a fair distance. So if you're within a kilometer, it's a pretty good shotgun. Uh, I wouldn't recommend sniping as such with it, uh, but you can and we'll sort of see that as the video progresses. So what I've done here is I've climbed a little bit and I've gotten a little bit of a vantage point of the battlefield, at least uh, from what I can manage with the performance of this plane, and I'm trying to pick off enemies that are going to be, again, targets of opportunity, people that aren't really paying attention, people that aren't uh, perhaps as, uh, <laughs> as aware, uh, or someone who's preoccupied with a friendly. So that A5C was coming up towards me, didn't see the uh, 9L. I got quite lucky there. And this A5 is coming in again. The A5 is actually going to be one of your more fierce opponents. Um, and it's actually a fairly decent match for the Thunderbolt because it just has so much energy over them. Uh, but they also shouldn't be at 10.0. I, I despise the A5C in all its being, but it's like one of the only things that can stand up to the A10 because it's got enough flares to deal with it. The way... 9Ls are at the moment. They are pretty susceptible to flares, and so if you do have flares, taking them is actually a fairly fairly serious necessity. So, while we're at kill number three here, three 9Ls, three kills. Uh, that's pretty impressive, because the 9Ls can sometimes uh, not be as reliable as you'd wish, but honestly, having this plane in the right situation, in the right position, is uh, enough of a enough of a necessity. It'll, it'll, it'll get you enough kills. Now, in this case here, the MiG-19 is actually able to steer away from the 9L because it's still burning, uh, it's still visible, and it's also fairly, uh, fairly, uh, I guess, compressed in terms of, you know, when you're flying at a high speed, your control surfaces compress, uh, and as such, you'll end up with a situation where you're going to end up uh, not turning as well, and that's kind of what I believe happens there with the uh, 9L until it enters its uh, its gliding stage. Now, 
I am going to brute here at uh, 1.2, 1.1, and you'll actually see me strike a hit here with the A5C, uh, simply because I believe these cannons are a bit more shotgunny and um, gives you, you know, a little bit more freedom. A little bit more brute is always good for the soul, and so we uh, brute another A5C, critically damaging him. Go in for the Harrier, and we're about to pick up our, uh, I believe this is sixth kill, but unfortunately it doesn't quite land home. And so I'm going to have to brute a little bit more, and brute away I do. Easy, easy kills. Six kills, we're going to go on for some more. This MiG-19 is going to be a bit of a threat, but we are able to deal with it provided that we work with our team. Now, of course, this is an online game and teamwork doesn't exist, so we have to do our best here to try and make the best of a bad situation, like A-10 dying to a MiG-19's R-3R, or R-3S rather, um, which is basically a 9B. So, for those of you that do find yourself up against the A-10, uh, try, try and just like sneak up on them, because chances are players that are playing, especially the A-10 early, uh, will tend to be newer players, and you can exploit that, but that's not really a good reason to keep it at a lower battle rating, just because it's more regularly played by more new players who literally don't know what the 5 key is, or what, what your flares are, uh, I, use, I use the 5 key for flares, so... Uh, if you if you don't know what flares are and you just can't use them, well, that's kind of on you because that's some of the most basic game mechanic ever, and it's not really something that you should be giving leeway to. Like, this is this is fairly basic, and the fact that you have such an easy killing machine here with the four nine Ls and the Gow eight, uh, as well as being decently able to turn and carry a whole lot of ordnance, doesn't bar the average player from the fact that. There's just, the, the, I genuinely don't think there's an excuse here. I don't think there's an excuse to keep it this low. The 9Ls are so powerful, the Gow 8's pretty good. The performance is kind of meh, but this is a ground attacker first and should be considered first as a ground attacker. So the fact that it's doing basically this much damage with uh, the ordnance that it has is pretty, pretty appalling, to be honest. Uh, almost as appalling as that um, vertical stall approach that I did because that was complete fucking rookie maneuver but oh well we'll live with that and we'll move on to the next match this lightning it tops out at about uh 1250 it's a very strong plane but it is simply no match for the far superior aim 9l which can just absolutely obliterate it in a matter of seconds if you guys pay 60 bucks for a uh, an a10 early you'll get the privilege of being able to do that twice in a match and then just brute the rest of your opponents like uh like it's nothing like it's just absolutely nothing i, I would actually call that pay to win uh, even though the Tech Tree version is markedly better, it's still better than uh, a lot of the other options that are out there that are of a similar rank. Now, this uh, particular J32 gets away quite lucky, and the uh, two MiG-21s here are looking pretty damn tasty. So I'm going to brute one of them. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy, and the SPSK is going to be food any second now, just because he's so damn slow. But uh, is it really is it really our fault that he's so slow? Um, no, not really, but we could probably do the same with Name 9G. We could probably do the same with uh, just about any other gun. So I genuinely have an issue with this plane, like genuinely so, because it is just so damn potent. If it, if it didn't have 9Ls, I would be totally fine with it. Even if it had the, uh, the AIM 64Ds, I couldn't care less about ground ordnance because at the end of the day, especially for Air RB, it really doesn't make a whole shred of difference. It just it just doesn't. The ability to take out ground targets is pretty much null and void at jets. At, at props it's a different story because you end up with these big space climbing bombers that end up causing lots of problems but in this case here in jets where everyone can cover the map in about three minutes then you kind of no real need for uh, sort of this type of distinguish oh the d distinguishment? Distinguishing. Uh, yeah there's no real need to sort of make the difference between these two known so for those of you that were saying well you know why am i using this thing as a as an air, an air fighter or an air superiority fighter or something like that well here you go ladies and gents here's your ground attack gameplay it's uh, pretty thrilling you just click on some targets it takes a lot of my brain unfortunately the one brain cell that's left is uh, really struggling at the moment so having the ability to uh, just have my target there click on them and uh, and miss is is really really strong so uh this plane yeah yeah great fun with uh those sarcastic notes aside it is actually fairly therapeutic 
it's nice to do this every once in a while. Um, but the fact that you're able to do this with a plane that's so potent in the air just sort of speaks volumes again about the plane and its capabilities. So finally, rounding off the SU-7 here, we are looking in a decent shape to intercept him. But like I said, the SU-7 can top out at a very high speed, pretty much double the speed that uh, the A-10 can. So we're going to be doing a little bit of spraying. We, we do a little Gow Avenger sniping. And we actually hit him pretty, pretty bad. We mess him up pretty bad. We are using air target rounds. Um, and even though we can kill ground targets, we can also kill air targets very effectively with this uh, belt. And so it's pretty much a done deal now. He's pretty toast. I can't really see him recovering from this. Um, not in the stall way, not financially. So um, it's it's pretty pretty win-win-win for, for me and a pretty lose-lose for the SU-7. Um, it's... Yeah, it kind of sucks being any other plane other than the A-10 or anything with flares. It's just a bit of power creep, and I don't really like it. Maybe I'll make a video detailing it in uh, a little bit more, like with its own unique video. But for now, I think the A-10 is extremely strong. I think it's quite potent. I think it's a little bit too much so. Um, and I think that if you want to buy it and abuse it, go for it and uh, use the decal link in the description below. Shameless plug. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, you'll make the devs aware of how stupid this decision is to put AIM-9Ls at 9.7 and 10.0. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Check out the links in the description below for all the fun stuff. And I'll catch you next time.